All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Welcome to Thinking Biblically. This is the 19th of June, Sunday, in the year of our Lord, 2022. <clears throat> well, we live in a society, a culture, with a government that has become decidedly Orwellian. This is not uh, terribly new. The government in the United States often has sought to suppress the truth and the access to truth when they felt it was their, in their interest to do so. During times of war, they've always tried to manipulate the population and to protect the population from any information that would cause them to question the actions of their leaders. Just like the Nazis, maybe just in a slightly different degree. Orwellian. The, the most dangerous kind of suppression is when you don't know it's happening. Otherwise, you know you're being messed with. And today, because of the Internet, uh, information is readily available, or was. It beca became somewhat harder. You had to go search out things. They... They have deliberately sought, the American government, the European governments have deliberately sought to suppress information on, for example, the war in Ukraine. This isn't particularly new. Remember when CNN uh, fired that correspondent that had the, the, the chutzpah to actually ask Saddam Hussein what he thought about things? Oh, no, we don't want to know what the other side says, lest it confuse us, of course. You know, um, people remember Vietnam. Uh, the military remembers Vietnam. Too much news coverage. People saw what was going on. They started asking questions. And eventually they turned against the military and against the government, against Johnson. Uh, another one. Anyway, uh, there's news came out yesterday. Now, I heard heard a report of this earlier, uh, previously, a previous day or so, uh, about civilians being shelled by the Ukrainians. Ukraine has been shelling, indiscriminately shelling and murdering civilians in the Donbass, the east of Ukraine, for eight years. Ukraine, this war has been going on for eight years. Russia did not start it. America started it. America Im, uh, empowered the Nazi factions from the area of Ukraine that really is not part of Ukraine, the, the, the western portion that was part of Galicia, that were the area that was... Uh, very sympathetic to a man named Stepan Bandera, who collaborated with the Nazis, who had a racist Nazi uh, ideology uh, in the interest of an independent Ukraine, except Galicia was not really Ukraine. It had a result of the World War I and the Russian uh, the so uh, Communist Revolution, other things he got appended on. And I think Putin, uh, Mr. Putin, has, has acknowledged that there are certain areas there that really aren't part of Ukraine. That's one of them. Also, the Crimea. It was given to the jurisdictional area of Ukraine by Khrushchev, I think, in the 1950s. 
like 56 or something. But it's Crimea, uh, Crimea historically was never part of Ukraine. And it was uh, became part of Russia as a result of a war with the Tartars, if I recall right, a, a Muslim uh, entity on the north side of the Black Sea, I believe, back in the late 1600s. Anyway, there was a war between them and Russia, and as a result of the Russia winning the war, uh, Crimea was uh, ceded to Russia, which was part of the Tartar, if I remember correctly, territory. So it's been part of, uh, Crimea was part of uh, Russia, I mean, there were there was it was not simply an act of aggression by the Russians either. This war there was, as typical, there's there's things on both sides that make things happen. Uh, ended up being part of Russia and Khrushchev for some unknown reason the, the Soviets couldn't understand it, and, and uh, neither do any, can anybody else. Is exactly why you know it was internal things. It made no difference because Ukraine was part of the Soviet Union, so he. Uh, maybe it was just administrative because it's basically adjacent to Crimea and uh, not uh, to the areas of Russia proper. But it was never part of, uh, really part of Ukraine. Not Ru Ukrainian people. There was a lot of Russian people. So of course, there was a lot of immigration under the Soviet Union. Things moved around a lot. Sometimes deliberately moved around by Stalin. Uh, the, the the Stalin tried to break up the Muslim, uh, Islamic areas and move people around and move other populations in. You know, you know what big government tends to do: solve problems by ap applying power. Now, anyway, uh, Russia. Of course, this was the this is the the Russia's naval base in the Black Sea is in Crimea, Sebastopol if I remember that name properly. Probably mispronounced it. but And they were not going to... The, civil, the Americans triggered a civil war with the object of, of separating Ukraine from any kind of uh, relationship with Russia. Uh, in, especially in 2014, they took advantage of some... Uh, well, it was a mess. They had... Uh, the oligarchs, uh, just like Russia did, and nobody like uh, Putin to rein in the oligarchs. The oligarchs were just plunderers. Um, and Putin had the, the wisdom to, to leash them, at least in Russia, and stop their plundering of the country. It was a, uh, under Yeltsin, when they broke up the, the state enterprises, they basically gave vouchers to people for like the equivalent of a stock. And these, these vultures, uh, the oligarch vultures swooped in and they set up their own entities using existing monies. Uh, and basically took advantage of the system to prey on the circumstances. Just We had a situation like this in Illinois a couple years ago. The state of Illinois was not paying its debts and obligations. Uh, nursing homes were not receiving Medicaid payments that they rely on to, to fund their operations. You have uh, patients that, that are not privately, uh, do not have private insurance Usually, when you get to that you get to that point in your long-term nursing home, uh, your 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 assets are quickly exhausted, and very few people could have, can afford the insurance costs to to cover long-term stays in nursing home. So you end up in Medicaid, and Medicaid, at least a, a, a good portion of it, is uh, state-funded. Illinois was not paying its bills, simply not paying their bills. Uh, yeah. Bad government, incompetent, political government, highly politicized. 
That's what happens when you make obligations for political purposes, uh, not caring about what's going to happen in 20 years, like promise, you know, ex uh, extravagant uh, uh, pension plans for to get people to vote for you. It's corrupt. The whole system is utterly corrupt. Some places more corrupt than others. But democracy itself is, is inherently corrupting and corrupt because you either have to be very rich or you have to beg for money and then become beholding to donors. Especially now if you're donating, you know, five and ten dollar there was that's why there was a, a limit on campaign contributions. And corporations weren't allowed to, uh, to do it in the past until the Supreme Court had a brain fart. Another one. And took those limits off. See, the idea is, you see, otherwise big donors will, you will have a big obligation. Now, if, now if people give you $10, $100, something like that, it's like you're not beholden to one group or one person. But when corporations and labor unions and things like that are able to contribute large amounts of money, then you become beholden. George W. Bush expressed that uh, once upon a time. I don't know if it was regard to his governorship in Texas or the president of the United States, but he said in a, te a Texas proverbial manner, you dance with them that brung you. In other words, your obligation is to dance with your big donors. Those that got in, the, though the, the powers, however that power was expressed, monetarily or politically or whatever, that got you into office. You have an obligation to them. He told the truth. Not all the time, but then he was speaking the truth. <sighs> anyway. There was a news uh, thing that came up uh, yesterday, and it's on uh, it's RT is where this version is here, which used to be called Russia Today, which I find to be much more dependable than anything in the United States. Uh, places like Breitbart and those kind of so-called news sites aren't news sites at all, really. They're all politicized. It's, they're just uh, vir virulently political. Whether it's conservative or, or liberal, it really doesn't matter. It's you, they're not reliable sources of truth. Uh, I, I've even noticed, and I have a question about uh, like uh, Daily Wire, the the collection of vloggers around Ben Shapiro. Is he really doing that? Simply expressing his beliefs, or is he? Is he monetized himself? Is, is he now simply a professional muckraker? I've seen this among Christians that have, as they build, you know, a, a viewership and then begin to monetize and then they begin to hire employees so they need money. The need for money is dangerous, especially for Christians. Trust God. He's sufficient. If your ministry can't be sustained by the Spirit of God, it's not going to be sustained at all. It's a delusion to think that you can build the kingdom of God with money, or that God requires money, needs money. At offering time in the church, you know, we should realize that this is a token, because God doesn't need our money the church building and the salaries and everything else is what needs the money. The institutions that man has built. That's where the money has to go. Because, you know, um, missionaries don't missionaries don't really need money. I mean, you might need a little bit, okay? But, see, let me I'll give you a clue here. Because I was on the border region with Mexico. A Christian missionaries that went into Mexico had to come. You couldn't get a missionary visa or a long-term visa. You had to go into Mexico on a tourist visa, which I believe was only valid for like 60 days or 90 days. So every 
90 days. You had to come out of Mexico and then reapply for another tourist visa and go back in. So we had a lot of missionaries coming north to the Rio Grande Valley. And they, they some Christian missions and stuff even had housing facilities. Some wealthy Christians even had housing facilities, houses, nice houses they had built uh, for missionaries that were coming out and they could stay there free and uh, you know they'd be out for a certain small amount of time and then they'd they'd visit some of their supporting churches and then they can go back into Mexico on another visa but uh, the one of the problems I ran into and I went to a language school that was run by a long-term retired <laughs> that's not a proper word for that gentleman retired he was in his well into his 80s, and he was still a ball of fire. Uh, Mexican missionary. Uh, I mean, American that was a, a missionary to Mexico. And there are some things that he was pushing that I really disagreed with. But the idea, like hiring locals to do all your, your work, you know, why should you spend your time or your wife spend your time, her time, washing clothes and stuff like that. What happened is Americans, they go down to places like Mexico and they want to have air conditioning and indoor plumbing and all the, the, uh, the, the, the American lifestyle. They want to take the American lifestyle with them. You better drop that at the border. If you're not willing to go in there, Judson, um, who was the, uh, the famous missionary to China? that was roundly criticized by British missionaries and everybody else because he adopted the Chinese lifestyle and Chinese dress. If you're a missionary to Mexico, live like the Mexicans. Not the rich Mexicans, the average or the poor Mexicans. Where you are, don't have a lifestyle that exceeds the average lifestyle of the people you're ministering to. Eat what they eat, wear what they wear, dwell in what they dwell in. You're going there in the name of Christ. Leave your corrupt American culture and American values at the border. Or you will be doing a disservice to Christ in the gospel. That's my opinion. And I think it's biblical. Paul said, I become all things to all men that by, my, by, by all means win some. And that's what he's talking about. Putting aside those things that might cause a stumbling block for the gospel. Like being a rich American with the only house in the town with air conditioning. So you can run it, you got a diesel generator running out there and uh, powering your air conditioning. You know, other people don't even have wa running water. They have to to walk a half a mile down to some spring someplace or to a community well or something. Live like them. How can you serve them? You don't even experience their life. Don't be the American. Renounce America at the border. I don't mean legally renounce it. In your heart, renounce everything that is not Christ. Now, Mexico typically is not. The cities, there's a lot of money. But you'll notice if you go to Mexico, you'll find the price of food at least as high as it is in America. But the income isn't. See, when we were down there, I think the hourly wage in the uh, American factories just south of the borders uh, was somewhere around a dollar an hour. Which is why it got moved, a lot of those places got moved to, Me to China because it was cheaper in China. Sometimes slave labor in China. Prisoners in China. That's American capitalism. Greed. Greed. And they justify it. 
but not in God's sight. Anyway, it gives you an opportunity to reduce your carbon footprint. <laughs> Uh, and it'll give you an opportunity to be thankful for God for things like shade and water and fire. The simple things of life. Live like people live for 6,000 years. Uh, not that they dress like in the, the Western movies anymore. I mean, ponchos and the the the, uh, the peons, in some areas they might, but no American jeans, you know, everything made in China, and T-shirts. That's pretty much <sighs> way too much. America has uh, way too much corruption in, in Mexico. Countries that 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 America has spread its cultural poison throughout the world. And this is really what this is about. But I do think that uh, uh, Russia Today, RT, is a uh, very respectable news site. Uh, they are not strictly pro-Russian government either. They will run some stories there that I don't really approve of. I do think, I, I really do think that Russia has made a, a uh, and Putin has made a turn back to God. They haven't arrived all the way yet, but they've they've made a they've they realize and they experience seventy years of atheism. So and there's still a you know the communists and atheism and everything is still legal there. There is no compulsion of religion. Islam is is legal. The various forms of Christianity. There's been some that have out, been outlawed. Organizations, not necessarily the beliefs, but the organizations of Jehovah's Witnesses, I think, and perhaps the Mormons. And I would approve of banning both of those, by the way. I do not believe in absolute freedom of religion or absolute freedom of speech. Because the Bible doesn't. Contrary to the Word of God. You know, the freedom to speak evil and to do evil is not biblical. Yes, you have the ability to do it, the power to do it, but you don't have the right to do it. That's the difference between exousia, authority and uh, what was the, what's the other word um, I'm, in, I'm in, in Spanish now poder uh, dunamis, dunamis. The, the power power is simply the raw power but authority is the right to do something and power is simply the ability to do something we have the ability of the sin but we never have the right to sin. I disagree with the entire liberal Western American values, I guess, because they're contrary to Scripture. So who do you side with, Christ or Biden? Because that's what American values are. He is. Joe Biden is to America... What Rick Warren is to the Southern Baptist, Baptist Christian, so-called evangelical Christianity. The epitome of what's wrong in both of those things. What happens when you do not faithfully cling to Christ and what God says? Judge things by his word not by the opinions of men. And understand those things you were taught in school are not biblical truth. And the only kind of truth there is is biblical truth. What God says is truth because God is truth. Let every man be found a liar, but God the true. So anyway... Uh, I do find RT uh, definitely more credible than, say, Associated Press or writers, which are nothing but propaganda instruments today, or Facebook or Google or any of these things that are deliberately bias information and feed false information. 
to pay their masters or to be paid by their masters. Who knows who actually controls Google? You know, we've got these black institutions in the government. Who knows what they're doing? I'll guarantee the NSA and the CIA uh, own internet serving farms here and there, and that they've thoroughly hacked into the so-called dark web by controlling certain key points. It's not so secret. Now, people that think they're safe there, it's like, no. You know, if there's, it's, it's, see, it's just like, the law enforcement does this same thing. You know, when people are, when people are trying to, to, to be, to hide things, you get suspicious, right? The officer, why are you acting nervous? What's in your car that you want me to see? Um, it's the same thing with government is when you have agencies, their budgets are secret, all their operations are secret. Congress is not even allowed to know except certain select individuals you know there's going to be lots of evil doing involved in corruption in that. Under Reagan, remember the Iran-Contra affairs? Uh, Ali North, who is a so-called Christian hero today? Pfft, really? Uh, see, that's a problem with mixing patriotism, which wasn't really patriotism, and Christianity. I, th I think people like North are simply using Christians. I think people like perhaps uh, Ben Shapiro, since I mentioned that, and the uh, the group around there. Now, there Matt Walsh and the others. You sort of wonder at some point when you start beginning to depend on money, can you keep yourself faithful to what you started as, or have you simply become professional muckrakers? Have you become professional tabloid publications, just spewing out? sensationalism for uh, your own benefit because you know there's an audience for it. Has conservatism, has the same thing happened to conservatism as happened to evangelical Christianity when it became a big business, Christian booksellers, the utter corruption of that and, you know, like you can go to uh, christianbook.com. Uh, they're probably the biggest discount online retailer, other than Amazon, but that's strictly Christian, so-called. And you look at the best sellers and everything else on that, and you will find that almost all those things that are best sellers are heretical. Because the content of the books is not driven by Scripture and godliness, but by the market, the love of money corrupts all things. It, it starts there are many evils. That includes in the church and in ministries and everything else. Once you become dependent on money, especially other people's money, you start compromising. I've seen it over and over and over again. Where people who probably once upon a time would have never imagined it no longer even can see the kind of things they're doing that may be completely lawful, but completely unchristian and unethical, especially about when it comes to raising money, engaging in manipulative tactics and everything else. They might not even know they're doing it, but it works. We did this and it works. Let's do it again. You know, the, the letters, sending out the letters that... Oh, if, if, if we don't get so much money this month, we're going to go out of business. Well, that might be true because you got bells. But you might have a stash of money there as a surplus, and you're not telling them about that. Or you're not telling them about where the money really goes. You're claiming you're going to use it to, for an orphanage, and it's really, you might use a little bit of it for the orphanage, but the excess or the most of it, we're just talking about this one thing because they'll bring money in. We just really want the money. Happens all the time. Joyce Myers and her ministries down in Haiti, or orphanages, 
She didn't care about them. She wanted to fund her lifestyles, what she was funding. It's just a scam. It's bait and switch. Beware of it. Christians, you have responsibility to give. If you're going to give money, make sure it's giving to something that, that really is serving Christ. Anyway, here at the uh, the band, band in, in Europe, RT, they think they've just been banned. Uh, I think it's been banned from uh, Facebook, too. Or not Facebook. Uh, sure, it's been banned from Facebook. Everything's been banned from Facebook. Uh, YouTube and Twitter, but uh, in the United States. So, But you can find it on Rumble and some others if you want to watch it live. They have a live feed with live news and the news stories, if you want to watch rather than read. But here, RT on, online, the, the written form, is available at RT.com. You can still get it. They haven't blocked it in the United States yet. For a while, they were trying to. I think they sort of gave up on it. Uh, but I'm sure the, the NSA had something to do with that. I mean, hackers, uh, no, no, this is... Uh, uh, denial of service attacks require... More than simply your neighborhood high school hacker. Organized large-scale efforts. It can be done by vi through viruses, but those kind of things are the kind of stuff the NSA and the military and everything else create, too. They're the biggest hackers. It takes a lot of resources. It takes a lot of control over key infrastructure on the web. They know where the key infrastructure is. They might own it. You sure you know that if there's something important like that and has to do with information, they're going to try to get their hands on it. You don't have to actually be someone like Snowden that was in there. You just know what's rational and logical and what sinners do, and then, okay, it follows from there. And if it's done in secret, who can question it? Who can? It's, that's why it's all in. They keep those things secret so you won't know what they're doing. You won't know what your government's doing, and that's why I want to show this story here. Ukrainian sh uh, shelling. This is dated yesterday, the uh, the the eighteenth. Ukrainian shelling kills five. Uh, report coming out from the DPR, the, the Donetsk People's Republic. I think this is the, the there's, there's Lugansk and Donetsk, which are part of the Donbass. These are areas that refused to accept the authority of the unlawful coup-installed government in Ukraine. So what we have here is a, a, a civil war that's been going on for eight years. At one point, these two uh, self-proclaimed republics don't they have the right of self-determination? We're on the point of defeating the Ukrainian military. I think the United States probably. Then he had what was called the Minsk Agreement, which they refused to abide by, the Ukrainians, or the, the other part of Ukraine. And then the Minsk II, which they also refused to abide by. See, there was... that. Otherwise, they would have been crushed by the the DPR and the LPR, Lunansk, Lunansk People's Republic. Okay, this is a story out of the DPR. Uh, also, by the way, the, the, uh, the, the armed forces of these two group areas, uh, the, the local, I guess you would call them militia, are doing most of the heavy fighting, I believe, in Ukraine, not the Russians themselves. The Russians have brought in their, their military, their professional military, part of it. And they're engaged mostly in the, uh, the a lot of the, uh, the, the higher level stuff, the air power and things like that. But they have supported, up until their incursion, their special military operation, their peacekeeping thing, you know, I, which is saving, liberating liberating Ukraine from the Nazis 
which is really what it's about a lot, and from the West, from the American Nazis, the White House Nazis. You know, the United States, you know, woke is a Nazi ideology, a racist ideology. America has become Nazi. See, but the, the difference is, is, is Hitler, it was Aryan, you know, blonde, blue-eyed, fair-skinned. Wokeism is everything but that. It's still racist. At it to its core, it's racist. You know that you are guilty because of the color of your skin. It's a it's a uh, a blood libel, which is banned by the Constitution, by the way. In other words, you're guilty because of your your ancestry. Of some sin they supposedly did. Except, you know, slavery was practiced by practically all nations. Oh, yes. As Dr. Soul has pointed out, that was a pretty much a universal. And who put a stop to a lot of it? It was England and America. Slavery as a legal thing under the Confederacy was only in existence for a couple of years. The rest of the time, slavery was legal under the government in Washington, D.C. Uh, anyway, the, uh, the report out of Ukraine yesterday was this. This is the line reported in the news. Uh, Ukraine armed formations continue to shell Verosilovsky district of Donetsk. Throughout the day, about 50 shells of 155 millimeter caliber targeted the city center were fired from positions of Ukrainian militants in Avdivaka. Avdivaka? The local capital, Donetsk, which is the capital of the Donetsk People's Republic, that regional area there, had, had seen intense heavy shelling recently. There's all kinds of, uh, online, in, on YouTube, there are various Americans and others that live in that area that have been reporting, crowdfunded, not corporate-funded, not government funded, about what's going on in those areas. And you can find them. Just don't expect the YouTube search engine to point you in that direction. <sighs> They'll point you to Reuters, Reuters and AP, you know, the, the, the propaganda ministries of the Biden administration and, and the who's 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 the Borg one over in 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 England? I don't know. Anyway, the the so the the thing that struck me, and I I heard this before this a day before. One hundred and fifty five millimeter shells. The Russians don't have one hundred and fifty five millimeter shells. The Russians' uh, equivalent artillery is one hundred and fifty two millimeter. That's the diameter of the projectile. The bore of the cannon is about six inches. I'm pretty close. Let me let me uh, do that. I think I, I think it actually is probably six. Uh, no, actually, the Russians are closer to the English unit. 152.4, six inches is 152.4. Depends on what, what part of the bore you measure, the lands or the grooves, but uh, they're not they're not compatible. In other words, you can't put American 150 or NATO 155 uh, millimeter shells because NATO tries to have standardized calipers in a 152 millimeter cannon without blowing the cannon up. Now you could put a Russian projectile in American gun; it just wouldn't work very good because it's, it'd fit loose. But American would fit too tight and blow up 
if you could get it out. Three millimeters would be quite a bit when it comes to cramming a big chunk of metal in there. But no, the, if, if it's 155 millimeter shells have been firing, uh, falling into next and other things, do you realize where those shells are coming from? Those are American and NATO shells. So Biden has been arming the Ukrainian Nazi uh, government that is using the American weapons for what? Fighting the Russians? Oh, no, they're too tough. They might shoot back. Firing 105 millimeter artillery shells indiscriminately. You can look at the videos, including from an American that's living over there, reporting what's happening. And an, you know the American government's not supporting them. <laughs> Crowdfunded. And let me let me look up his name really quick here. Bookmark. YouTube. No. Oh. Okay, I guess I got to open up another one here. I want to give you his name. Um, Patrick Lancaster. Now, there's another one. Let's see. He's not an American, but he speaks English. Graham Phillips. So Graham Phillips... But I'll go to Patrick Lancaster, because um, he is an American. And so he's got 115,000 subscribers. And you see, he is, uh, uh, he's, so here, uh, says here, the latest, latest video, two hours ago, I haven't even seen it. Many dead as Ukraine artillery hits Donetsk harder. Donetsk, hard to say this. A previous one, uh, 21 hours ago, intense shelling hit city, hit center Donetsk again. These are 155 millimeter, 155 millimeter shells. These are not Russian shells. These are not Ukrainian shells. See, Russia and Ukraine is basically the same weapons, dating back to the Soviet times. They're firing American artillery with American shells, whether they're NATO or what. Those those M777 howitzers. Yeah, this is how America and Ukraine changes the 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 the, the battle, wins the war. They indiscriminately shell civilians. And your government is provi is providing the artillery and shells to shell civilians, which is an indiscriminate shelling of a city, is a war crime. Biden and the American government is complicit in war crimes in Ukraine. Beyond a doubt, if these are proved to actually, yeah, you can find, you know, you can pick the pieces up and identify where they come from. Not to mention that when you destroy them out in the field, oh, that's an American 777 howitzer. Whether it came from England or wherever, but we do know America has confessed to sending them over there. And when you, the Democrats and Republicans are talking about gun control, who is going to take the guns away from the American government and the American president? and forbid him to kill civilians. There is no difference between what Biden is doing in Ukraine and if a Biden decided to launch an artillery barrage against Dallas, Texas. No difference. Human beings 
are human beings. And the American government is complicit in all the murders and the genocide that's been going on against, it's, it's not the, the breakaway regions that are responsible. They broke away to save their lives from the genocidal maniacs that the United States empowered in 2014. Noland and the American ambassador and John McCain knew exactly who these people were. But they decided to use them, just like America created ISIS. And the Americans helped create the Taliban. America did. In their mania, in their obsession with destroying Russia. They don't care who they kill. You know, if they're willing to do this in other countries, realize they're willing to do it here, too. These people, when people overthrow other countries' governments, they're willing to overthrow the government here, too. Because it's the same thing. This is your tax dollars at work. Take a look at uh, the videos on YouTube on let me uh, Patrick Lancaster's channel, and you can go over and as I pointed out, you can also see things on. Let me make sure I've got the right. No, I need to go here. You can also, I also recommend, the, now there might be others, I'm sure there's others. There was some young lady that was doing it too. Some of these people uh, and uh, a few others, there's, uh, let's see, who else? I don't think I have her bookmark. Gonzalo Lira, uh, two, I, I there. Uh, he was actually taken prisoner by the secret police. And... Maybe it was Western American or other pressure, you know, calling embassies and everything else, trying to get him out. Uh, he lived in America. He was, uh, I think he's originally from uh, Chile. Uh, but he is living currently in Kharkov in Ukraine. He's not on the front line so much, but uh, and he's not free to leave the city. Uh, the sacred police told him so. Now you cannot leave. Graham Phillips. Let's go over here. So if you see this, he also is reporting from those areas here. He reports from uh, now some of these people. You know, I don't, I don't know the details of how he funds himself, but there's a little bit of sensationalism and stuff. Uh, you can also find on our T, although again, this, sometimes it's some of the stuff's hard to get to. See, he did a series of stories uh, that, that point out this. See here, that's a that's a Nazi symbol, by the way, the Z with a slash through it. Uh, it it, or the N with a bar. I don't know. Mass neo Nazi marks in Ukraine today. Uh, I don't know what the date on that is. But you'll find information on there from, he is also over there in the uh, area of Donbass and down into Crimea. Uh, let's see. And they do interviews with people, and you can see uh, young ladies lying on the beach down in, yeah, uh, a little. Uh, Nothing like skin to attract attention. I'm not vouching for the morality of these guys. I'm just saying that if you want some information that's not controlled by these governments that are complicit 
in murder and genocide. The American, the British, NATO is complicit in genocide. These these campaigns. Oh, there's a long history of of a, a British Secret Service uh, MI6 and an American CIA overthrowing governments together. Back to uh, Mossadegh in Iran. Democratically elected, I think it was 1953. I think I said 56 the other day, and that was, I think, an error. But uh, Mossadegh, and what happened out of that? The Americans installed the Shah of Iran. And there's a direct link between that, the American coup, the institutional institution of the, the installation of the Shah, and the support of the Shah and the Savak, the savage Iranian secret police trained by America. And uh, Khomeini's revolution. So when Americans were scratching their heads, why did the Iranians take the American embassy uh, and the people in it hostage? Because America had held the people of Iran hostage under a vile dictatorship of the Shah for decades. America had overthrown their government and installed a puppet government in Iran. At the behest of British Petroleum and the British government. You need to know history. And when something comes out, you need to look at history and see what the underlying causes were that led to these things, like 9-11. It didn't come about out of thin air simply because the Muslims are bad people. It's not because Muslims are anti-Christian. It's because Muslims were anti-American because of what America's been doing in their lands. In places like Pakistan. And Saudi Arabia. The Saudi government would not be in, in place today if the Americans hadn't guaranteed to protect it. The tribe of Saud, the house of Saud. There was an arrangement made. And America profited from it. It established the, the American dollar as the international exchange medium, petrodollars. You want oil, you got to pay for it in dollars. Allowed America to keep printing money. Essentially a tax on the rest of the world. Well, that's coming to an end. And you, real, you better realize there's going to be some major changes when that happens. And you're, I hope you got enough holes in your belt to tighten it because it's going to be tightened. America's going to have to live within its means, such as is left. But I just want you to know what's going on and what your government is doing supposedly in your name. Those 777 155 millimeter howitzers that were sent to Ukraine. Supposedly, now you, the Ukrainian military was trained by the United States and NATO, trained in tactics. They are using those guns, those heavy weapons to indiscriminately shell. And they've been doing this for eight years with their guns that the Russians have removed. To shell civilians indiscriminately. They don't care. They're war criminals. They are Nazis. They do the deeds of Nazis. 
And Biden supports them with every fiber of his being. What kind of fiber there 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 is there? I mean, at least until he discards them, like he discarded Afghanistan. See who's in power in Afghanistan? The Mujahideen, the Taliban. Who created those? CIA. CIA. To make the Russians bleed. Well, there's a story about Afghanistan, too. The Russians got sucked in, and America wanted it to get sucked in. They wanted Russia to have their Vietnam, or I should say the Soviet Union. It wasn't Russia at the time. It was the Soviet Union. They wanted them to bleed, just like Russia, the Soviet Union, supporting North Vietnam, defending their own country, seeking the unification of their own country, made America to bleed. But compared to the amount of Vietnamese the Americans killed, it was nothing. Ho Chi Minh, he was more of a nationalist than a communist. But the United States, rather than back the independence and self-government of the peoples of the Asian area after World War II, decided instead to support the French in their attempt to recolonize Indochina, Vietnam, Thailand, Cambodia, to reestablish the French Empire. The United States chose the wrong side. <sighs> Ungodliness in government. So when you uh, rah rah, and celebrate the 4th of July this year, just remember who you're celebrating, what you're celebrating. 1776 was not about God. It was about rebellion against God. And almost no one wants to say the truth. But I'll say it. It was rebellion against God. The American Revolution was rebellion against God, led by ungodly men. Don't believe the lies. Don't be manipulated by the world. Don't be complicit in the works of the world. Now, the Scripture does tell us to pay tax to whom tax is due. And that really is the grace of God to get us out of, uh, off the hook. So we don't have to get ourselves cast into prison in order to, to stand for the truth. God has said, pay tax to whom taxes do. So God's responsible for the judgment of these men and women. Madeline uh, O'Hare, no, who was it? Albright wrong person when asked about the sanctions under the uh, uh, Clinton administration on Iraq that resulted in the deaths of according to authoritative sources like the United Nations 500,000 Iraqi children starved to death malnutrition disease as a direct result of sanctions. She was asked if it was worth it by a, I think, CBS correspondent. She said, I think so. I wonder if she thinks that now. Now she stands before her judge. And she must render account for her actions. And she has no savior. 
who atoned for her sin because she rejected Christ. Think about that. When the politicians tell you and try to stir you up and get you to support their adventures, don't be complicit in their criminal acts, in their genocide, in their murder. Don't let them deceive you that abortion is a woman's right to choose. Sin is never a right. You do not have a right to do evil, ever. I could care less what uh, the Enlightenment philosophers said, John Locke said. John Locke is not God. God is the only and ultimate authority. And he establishes what is right and wrong, and it is rooted in his own character. Those who shed innocent blood will pay the consequences. There is forgiveness in Christ but nowhere else. Nowhere else. If you have committed, you have, you have committed sins. All sin is rebellion against God. All sin is lawlessness. But perhaps you've had an abortion. There is forgiveness in Christ. Repent. Turn to him. Confess your sin. Confess your need for him to save you, realizing that you're not, you're not, not only have you sinned, but you're a sinner and you need to be saved from yourself. You need to, re need to be reconciled with God. You need to become a new creature. God's in the business of saving sinners. He rejoices in the salvation of sinners. The, the angels of heaven rejoice in, when one sinner repents. But when the judge comes and sits in judgment, and those who haven't repented are cast into hell, all heaven is going to rejoice at that too, at the justice of God, the vindication of God's justice. See, if you turn to Christ, he has vindicated those who turn to him because he paid the penalty for God's justice for them on the cross. God made a way for sinners to be saved. A corridor, just like Russia over there in, in Mariupol and now in uh, uh something Severodonetsk or something like that, another city. They opened humanitarian corridors to allow the civilians or to allow the, the combatants that will surrender, escape. Lay down your arms and we'll take care of you. Civilians, come out. We'll send you wherever you want to go. A corridor of grace and mercy, a way of escape. Well, God did that in Christ. There's a way of escape, one way, and that is Jesus Christ. Faith in Christ is the only way of salvation. God only did, made one way, and that is Jesus Christ. And if you reject him, just like many in Mariupol rejected the Russians' offer. And they're continuing to do that in other places. For whatever reason, they said no. Well, if you say no to God, no to God's salvation, no to God's Son, no to salvation by grace alone, through faith alone, and Christ alone, you're saying no to God. No to the only hope there is, to the only Savior there is. 
then you will experience the justice of God. Not just the justice do you for your other sins, but for especially for your sin of rejecting God's salvation. Terrible fate, but a very just fate. People won't be mourning about you. They'll be thanking God for his justice. Just like those who trust in Christ, the angels rejoice and thank God for his grace and mercy. Choose wisely. 